Site links are one of the most customizable ad assets we have in both Google and Microsoft ads. They give you almost an entire additional ad worth of text, as well as a different landing page for that new text to help send users to a potentially more relevant page on your site directly from the search engine results page. So with that power, you're able to customize things to get the best results from your search campaigns. So in this video, we want to talk through some strategies that you can use to get the most out of your site links. We're going to jump back and forth to some real world examples, the Google Ads interface and some slides throughout this presentation. But first, I want to cover just a few examples of what site links can look like just to cover the basis for those of you who aren't quite as familiar. On Google, I've gone ahead and typed in the name of a department store. And you can see here we have the sponsored text up here at the top. And then all of these additional line items down below are the site links that are associated with that ad. So you can see 25% off friends and family, fast and free pickup, save more with clearance, shop holiday gift cards, and beauty stocking stuffers. Each one of these is a site link so that if I were to click on this, it would take me to, as you can see in the bottom, sale event, coupons and deals page, as opposed to the landing page, which is just the home page for this brand, if I were to click on the main headline. So here you can see you have customized text and customized landing page to extend the reach of your ad. This one is taking up almost the entire page of text listings, not including shopping, but these five site links are taking up a ton of space and a lot of really valuable real estate for this brand. To create site link assets in Google Ads, you would need to navigate in this left-hand bar below campaigns to the assets group and click on assets. Here you'll see all of the different types that are available in the account. We wanna click on site link. You can see we don't have very many set up in this placeholder account. So let's go ahead and click the blue plus button. And now for the time being, we're gonna skip this first step with the add to section. We'll come back to that here in just a second, but let's cover just the basics of a site link extension or site link asset as Google likes to call them now. First, you're gonna get the headline. This is the basic site link text, and you have 25 characters for this. You can see on the right-hand side, there's now a quick link that just says paid media videos down below. And now there's another one with a little bit of a button. And that's what it looks like if you use only the headline. You'll notice that you only need to add a headline here. Descriptions line one and line two are just recommended, but you get 35 characters for each of those. So let me put in some crappy example text. We now have placeholder text in here. And then I'm gonna just put in the final URL. And now we have a full site link built out so that when somebody were to search for a term that would trigger a paid media pros video, we would have the option to have this site link show up below it and have an additional place for them to go on the website. You'll see down below, you can then add multiple different site links. So let me go ahead and build a couple extra crappy examples. And now you can see in the example, we have all of the four site links that I've created here. Unfortunately, Google is simply not showing the extended version of what this would look like in this preview. I'm honestly not sure why, but you'll remember that example from earlier. Google does have the option to show the descriptions that you've included as well to make your ad more compelling and take up more space on the results page. Once you were done adding your site links, all you need to do is click save and everything would show up in your account. But before I do that, let's revisit this add to section up at the top because the hierarchy of where you add your site links will make a difference as to what shows for which portions of your account. As you saw in the Google Ads interface, you can add site links to the account, campaign, or ad group level. But depending on where all you add your site links to your account, it's gonna impact what shows where. If you add site links only to the account level, then those site links are eligible to show for every campaign and ad group in your account. They'll run in any instance where Google thinks it's suitable for that site link to run, and you'll have full coverage over your account simply by adding them at the account level. Now, if you add site links at the account level and campaign level, whenever an auction comes up, for campaigns that have the site links at the campaign level, those campaign level site links are the ones that are gonna show, and the account level will not. Google will always pick the lowest level site links to show for your ads whenever you are triggered for a search. If you have some campaigns with site links added to them and others without site links added at the campaign level, but you do have site links at the account level, then that campaign without their own dedicated site links will show the account level version. It's only for the campaigns that have site links associated with them that will show campaign site links as opposed to the account level. The same hierarchy logic is true for ad group. 
if you have specific ad groups that have site links associated with them, then those are the site links that are going to show and the campaign and account level site links will not show. So you need to have some sort of strategy in place to know what site links you want to show for which campaigns and ad groups, or if you have some that you want to show for the entire account. Depending on what you're advertising and how your campaigns are structured, it might make sense for you to have ad group level site links for every single ad group, or it might make sense for you to have them only for a couple and utilize campaign level site links for everything else. In some accounts, we just have account level site links and that covers our basis for every campaign that's in there. There's no need for more granular messaging at either the campaign or ad group level. So we just rely on account level site links and don't even apply the other ones. But the thing that helps determine what that hierarchy strategy should be for an account is to determine what you actually want to use in your site links. Let's look at a couple live examples. We've already looked at this Kohl's ad. They have site links that are about a 25% off friends and family discount. We're in the holidays. So they're trying to show a promotion that they have, some sort of sale price. You can get fast and free pickup. So it's kind of a benefit to a customer. They'll send you to a clearance section so you can find some deals. They want you to shop gift cards, which is an entire category of products this time of year. Same with stocking stuffers. There's all sorts of different categories they're sending people to based on what they think is gonna be the most impactful. But if we take a second brand, Lowe's Home Improvement has a few different areas. They have appliances, all departments, and lawn and garden, which are just either individual departments of the company or shop all departments, which shows all the departments on the Lowe's site. So that would include appliances, lawn and garden, plumbing, hardware, everything in there. They then also have a credit center, something about price. And they also have careers in case you're trying to get a job at Lowe's rather than shop there. Disney World has a few other examples. They have Hollywood Studios. You can buy tickets. So this is an immediate buy page rather than going to just a regular homepage. They've also got vacation planning. If you're not familiar with Disney, planning a vacation there can be extremely overwhelming if you've not done it before. So they do have some options to make that easier. You can explore the hotels and they have offers and deals. One last one, just looking at Zoom, you can see the Companion 2.0. They have a phone, they have a scheduler, they have a workplace. Each of these are going to be different products within the Zoom family brand that they're trying to advertise through their site links rather than just sending people directly to the regular video conferencing site. So that brings up a whole world of suggestions of what you can use as your site links. And this is where you're able to get creative and start to create a holistic message that will ideally complement the ad creative that you have in that ad group. This certainly isn't an exhaustive list, but these are the types of things that we try to use in site links to make our ads and our client ads more appealing. We start with compliments and supplements. There's a very narrow distinction between these two. A compliment is something that will add value or add functionality to what you're already trying to sell. If you're selling peanut butter sandwiches, a compliment to that would be selling jelly. Probably think of something more like a Zoom example that we saw earlier. You might want the call conferencing software, but utilizing a scheduler also makes that call conferencing software work way better. Supplements are a little different. Supplements are additional products or services you can have that don't really impact the functionality of the original thing that somebody was trying to buy, but they can add value to the user experience overall. The closest example I have to this is for the Kohl's search where we had a stocking stuffers site link on the account. Odds are if you were trying to buy stocking stuffers, you probably would have typed that in. But now that Kohl's has that listed on there, that might be an additional draw to get you into the store, either on the website or actually going into the store, because now you know you can buy what you were already going to Kohl's to buy, but they also have stocking stuffers. The examples we saw the most are going to be categories and departments. So for Disney, one of their parks is going to be a different category or department. For Lowe's, we saw literal departments, whether it's appliances, lawn and garden. But just think if you were another big retailer brand like Nike, you could send people to a shoe category or a clothing category, or you could use men's versus women's as your different site link breakdowns. Think of all the different categorizations you have within your business and how can you advertise those. If you're a local service provider, maybe you do plumbing and HVAC. Each one of those would be a different subset of your business and could be a different category or department. Calls to action are another one. You'll remember the Disney example. They had a buy tickets now directly in their site links. 
a lot of software companies that we work with will utilize a request demo site link so that they can send users to a dedicated page who are already probably further down the funnel and ready to convert. So think of all the different calls to action you could use there. Buyer journey information. The best example we have of that goes back to Disney, in my opinion, and that's the vacation planning section. All of that is highly valuable information that people are going to need throughout the buyer journey, and you might not know where exactly they land just based on the high-level search. So adding that to different campaigns, ad groups, or even at the account level can help nurture your potential buyers by giving them the information they need. Last is company information. In the Lowe's example, we saw that there was a careers page, which may or may not be my favorite, but it's in there. But lots of companies will use the About Us page or their blog page or something along those lines to help generate a closer tie with potential customers. Maybe you have a proprietary process that you use for your services that you provide. Having a page dedicated to that to show why you are different or better than your competitors and why your process works could be a great site link to use for your campaigns. Now, as I mentioned, this is not an exhaustive list, but there's tons of ways that you could use site links. Think of all of the unique messaging you could apply to your campaigns. Hopefully this list has gotten you started and then start to decide what type of hierarchy you want. Can it live at the account level and make for slightly easier management? Or do you need to start segmenting your message based on different campaigns or ad groups, depending on how your account is structured? Odds are, if your account is already structured by categories and departments, Lowe's, for example, let's say they already have campaigns that are broken out by appliances, lawn and garden, plumbing, it probably doesn't make sense to have different departments as site links on those campaigns. They probably need to have further subsets of those departments as the site links for appliances. Rather than giving links to the all department section or lawn and garden, they probably need to have site links that are sending people to refrigerators versus washer and dryers versus stoves. Those are going to be more meaningful for people who are already searching for appliances in the Lowe's ecosystem. Site links are an excellent option to customize your search ads and make sure that the user has every opportunity to engage with you by sending them to potentially even more relevant landing pages than what you're using in your regular ads. If you have any additional questions about site links or anything else in the Google Ads or Microsoft Ads interface, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.